Photography is supposed to be something that's a lot of fun, not only for us photographers, but also if we're getting into professional photography for our clients as well. But there are some things that we can do when we start our photography businesses that can really damage our reputations or even our business altogether. And today's story is exactly something that you should not do in kind of a whirlwind of worst case scenarios that an amateur photographer got herself into and ultimately lost her career in one day because of the actions that she took. So early the other morning, a friend of mine reached out to me and asked me if I would be able to shoot a wedding the day that he was texting me. Unfortunately, I could not do this because I had a lot of pre-existing things going on, and honestly, I don't really shoot a whole lot of weddings anymore. But what my friend informed me of was quite startling and very upsetting. It turns out that somebody that he knows had a photographer cancel on them hours before their wedding. And when he first described some of the details of what was going on to me, it didn't sound like anything was out of the ordinary. It just was very unfortunate for this soon-to-be husband and wife. But then he started sharing with me some of the information that he was getting from his friend. Apparently, the photographer had been up since 5 a.m. with two sick kids. And the reason she wasn't going to get to make it to the wedding is because she needed to take the kids to the emergency room. I don't really see why she couldn't have dealt with that then and still made it to the wedding because the photographer did admit that her husband was available to watch their kids, he just didn't want to. And then come to find out, the photographer never actually even set up a contract with her client. But the real big issue that was really stirring the pot on social media and starting to gain a lot of traction and a lot of attention with hundreds of people commenting and thousands of people interacting with this post thread was that the photographer was refusing to give back the client's security deposit in the event that the client was to quit. The photographer was claiming that in her policy and her clauses, that even if she, the photographer, were to cancel on the client, the security deposit stayed for her own. And then she made up for that by offering a free session sometime down the road. Now with photo sessions like general portraits or maybe even engagement photos, I could almost see that but not the day of the wedding when you're planning for makeup and hair and guests and all these things are happening at a certain venue, you can't recreate that later on. In some cases, engagement photos are the same way. You schedule hair and makeup appointments a lot of the times and you're gonna to have to call and reschedule those things as well and it may not all line up the way that you would like it to. And what this amounts to is there's a lot of discussion going back and forth between the client and the photographer on how that security deposit system should be worked out. It eventually got to the point where the photographer was willing to give a portion of that deposit back, but not the entirety of it. But what happened was a lot of people on social media started going and leaving negative reviews on this person's uh, business Facebook page, sending them lots of uh, upset messages. So at that point, the photographer starts to try to negotiate with the client saying, if you can convince all these people to quit leaving negative reviews and to remove the reviews and comments they'd already put out. At that point, once her name was back to a normal standard, then she would release the rest of this deposit. But that did not go over very well with the client and with all good reasons. I would still be upset about that as well. Well, long story short, the client did eventually get their entire deposit back, but only after the reputation and the business of this particular photographer had been completely run through the mud all on her own will, technically. Because there's a few other things that she said to her client that were way out of line and led to ultimately her having to shut down her business page and probably never be able to practice photography in the area that she lives in ever again. She actually had the audacity to tell her client that it was her client's responsibility to ensure she had proper coverage on her wedding day. She said that she expected her client to have a second photographer in mind and already booked to handle photographing her wedding in the event that her primary photographer couldn't make it. Are you kidding me? That is not something that you expect of your clients. If anything, you as the photographer should have a secondary shooter or somebody to replace you in the event that there's an accident or emergency. At the end of the day, Either she could have simply given the money back, which was all that the client was asking her to do, but instead she chose to escalate the situation. There was even one comment made by the photographer's mom to multiple people who were complaining about this situation, 
that they could just go out and buy a disposable camera and have someone that's going to be participating in or uh, just coming to the wedding take the photos on that. So we have a whole whirlwind of situations happening here. Well, how can you avoid problems like this in the future? Well, for one, you can just simply provide good customer service and take care of your clients. But number two, before you do any photo session whatsoever, there should be some form of contract or legal binding agreement between yourself and your client drawn up. Because another thing I failed to mention, in case you still maybe are siding with this photographer, is the problem I had, the red flag there, was if the photographer set up all these sessions, took in all these security deposits, and then canceled on all these people, and kept all or some of their security deposit, that would be a problem because then she's basically scamming people and getting paid to do no work whatsoever. Well, it just so happens the photographer admitted that in the past when she had to cancel on other clients, they either received some of their security deposit back or none at all. And in return, they got a free session later on, which essentially they already paid for because they didn't get their security deposit back. So it leads me to believe this lady was just being a little scammy and not trying to be a legitimate business person. So if you're looking to start a photography business or you already have one, ensure that you have contracts in place, ensure that you truly care about the clients and the art of photography, and you're not just in this to make a couple extra dollars on the side, because ultimately what you're doing is you're causing a lot of distrust in the community and causing a bad name for other photographers out there. But now's when I would like to hear from you. Leave your creative comments in the comments section below about who you think was in the right or wrong and why. Now, to kind of give you an idea of the final results of this, the bride and groom did find another photographer to shoot their wedding. The ex-photographer no longer has a business page. I think she's even uh, hidden or blocked her personal page. And it seems to be that all the posts where I was getting all this information from have all been taken down or Facebook's blocked it in some way, shape or form. So I really can't find a lot more information, but I did see that an update from the bride and groom that they were happy, everything worked out great. And the photographer seems to be out of business as she should be. But hope you enjoyed today's video and learned a very valuable lesson from this. And as always, be sure to create something new today.